Hello there. I'm here to show you a wonderful place. What if we tell you the wonderful place that Cooper Howard was selling us is actually a hub of nightmares? And that its secret experiments gave birth to mutated monsters and deformed humans? Here's Exhibit A, and here's Exhibit B. So what exactly went on in Vault Number 4 of the Fallout series? That's what we're here to tell you. Strap on your seatbelts and put on your rad suits because you're in for one hell of a ride, all the way up to level 12. But before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. First, what are the vaults in Fallout? Here's a little background on what the vaults are in the Fallout universe. The Amazon Prime show is an adaptation of the big-budget Fallout gaming franchise, and the vaults are central to its storyline. Both the games and the show have retro-futuristic aesthetics and are set in a post-apocalyptic America, which has been reduced to a wasteland after the nuclear bombings of 2077. In the 21st century of the Fallout storyline, the world was struggling with depleting resources, and the fight over resources was expected to culminate into a nuclear war. Ahead of the impending war, powerful corporations such as Vault Tech created several fallout shelters called vaults, with the count reaching well over a hundred all around America. These vaults promise a swanky lifestyle underground while sheltering its inhabitants from the radiation outside in the wake of a nuclear war. By selling these vaults to those who can afford them, Vault Tech aimed at gaining a capitalist monopoly over America. But when some factions of the society advocated for a peace treaty, which meant no nuclear war, Vault Tech ensured that the government did not sign off on the peace proposal. In addition, Vault Tech also bought the technologies and entire organizations that were working towards a solution for unlimited resources. Through these clandestine moves, Vault Tech made sure that there comes a time when nuclear bombs are dropped on America, and then they become heroes by offering these sheltered vaults to the affluent. At the beginning of this video, showbiz sensation Cooper Howard was advertising one such vault, which came with the tagline, not made by God Almighty, but the working man, a veritable Camelot of the nuclear age. For a better look at this futuristic shelter that is Vault 4, Cooper gave a walk-around tour with his dramatic flair and banged on the walls to talk about Vault 4's three-foot-thick casing, which was strong enough to keep out the radiation. This vault tech model, number 96JQ1164 houses several apartment-like setups with all the modern amenities for a population of 200. The underground borough even has named corridors such as the swanky Sycamore Street. To test out these vault tech bunkers ahead of the nuclear war, a family of scientists, the Hawthorns, decided to live inside Vault 4 for five years, along with 80 other volunteers, resulting in a community governed entirely by scientists. It indeed seems seems like a fairy tale setting with a nuclear war around the corner. But in reality, it was more like a scary tale than a fairy tale. This explains why Episode 6, which unravels the murky secrets of Vault 4, is titled The Trap. Exploring Vault 4's Sinister Past When we first meet the Hawthorns in Episode 6, they're busy showing off their lavish lifestyle within the vaults. In between, Cooper plugged in a tiny but important detail that the Hawthorns are scientists who specialize in the effects of radiation on human DNA. And within Vault 4, they have uninterrupted authority to do whatever experiments they deem fit in order to ensure the survival of humanity in a post-apocalyptic world. The dark secret of Vault 4 lies in the nature of these freakish experiments that the scientists carried out unopposed for years, till their genetically engineered creations turned on them and killed them. A shocking scene in Episode 6 reveals the sinister nature of the experiments that were started in Vault 4 around the year 2077, and continued even after the Great War. In the year 2296, when protagonist Lucy and her buddy Maximus arrive at the Hawthorne Medical Laboratory's building looking 
searching for medical supplies, they accidentally step into a trap and land up in Vault 4. There, Lucy and Maximus were heralded in by a welcoming community of Vault 4 dwellers, who are mostly strange mutants and survivors of the Shady Sands bombings. The Vault 4 dwellers tended to Lucy and Maximus' injuries, gave them food and shelter, and invited them to some in-house rituals, but asked them to steer clear of Level 12. Soon enough, Lucy noticed that something was off about the people of Vault 4, particularly in terms of their anatomy. For example, the overseer of Vault 4 has one central eye, kind of like Mike Wazowski from Monsters, Inc., with Maximus further noticing that the eye was placed a little towards the left. Anyway, the eye placement aside, the overseer is fully human. Then there were others, who had random noses sticking out of their foreheads, and one woman with neon blue, fish-like eyes with tentacles coming out of her chin. Having identified Level 12 as the Forbidden Forest of Vault 4, Lucy decided to hop onto the elevator. A trip to Level 12 revealed some inexplicable experimental specimens that shocked Lucy and also the viewers. Vault 4's Level 12 houses dilapidated research labs with jars containing cutouts of human faces and organs and an aquarium-like device that can fit humans. When Lucy played a recorded video on a nearby monitor, the footage showed a woman giving birth to flesh-eating fish inside the aquarium, and the school of piranhas then eating up the woman alive. Further into the lab, Lucy noticed an array of large cryocapsules, which contain pregnant women resting in cryosleep. Soon, a Vault 4 scientist came up on level 12 to check on the subjects inside the capsules, and discovered Lucy hiding in the labs. Lucy was taken back to the one-eyed Vault 4 overseer, who showed her some previously recorded footage from back when the Hawthorns were residing and experimenting in Vault 4. In the black and white footage, a panicked Dr. Lloyd Hawthorne tells the camera that these may be his last words, while in the backdrop, his wife Cassandra Hawthorne can be seen blocking the vault doors with furniture. What happened here should not be used as a case study for what happens when scientists are given unregulated control, said Lloyd just before the vault door was blasted open by an uncontrollable monster, who then ate up the scientist's duo. As the camera kept recording, the creature was briefly captured in the footage, and it turned out to be a gigantic gulper, a mutated creature from the Fallout games. Our test subjects were less compliant than we expected. The Freaky Experiments of Vault 4 DNA scientists Lloyd and Cassandra began their trial life in Vault 4 by running experiments in the lab ahead of the Great War. Even after the bombs dropped, the Hawthorns and their team of scientists continued with the DNA tampering, this time by luring survivors from the surface. As per their own admission in the video logs, Lloyd and Cassandra were hybridizing humans with radioactive resistant species in the Vault 4 labs. And these freaky experiments resulted not only in the creation of mutated humans, humans, but also bloodthirsty creatures, one of which is the Gulper, a mutated form of the salamander, and the other being those school of piranha-like fish that ate up the woman. It's a stirring reminder of what this place is all about, said the overseer, who explained that the monster in the video was once his great uncle Peter. The original members of Vault 4 used to experiment on the Holocaust survivors, who sought refuge in the vault after the Great War, and that's the dark truth behind this vault. Eventually, the test subjects who were lured in from the post-war surface rebelled against the scientists, possibly leading to slaughter of the laboratory staff. The monsters also became wild and broke free from their confinements to attack their creators. That's when Vault 4 was taken over by the survivors of the experiments. And the descendants of those genetically altered humans currently live within Vault 4, which explains their anatomical abnormalities, such as the one-eyed forehead or the tentacled face. When she asked about the women in the pods, Lucy was told that these are the people that were heavily experimented on by Hawthorne and his team. Level 12 serves as a palliative care facility for these women, and keeping them in climate-controlled pods simply eases their pain. Thus, in present-day Vault 4, the community of mutant humans exist peacefully together, having connected over the trauma of their lineage.
Meet the Gulper, a Vault 4 experiment. To understand the extent of Vault 4's creepy experiments, let's take a look at the Gulper. In the Fallout games, the Gulpers are mutated forms of amphibious salamanders, which were irradiated by the radiation from the nuclear holocaust. These creatures grow to humongous proportions over time, with the oldest ones becoming the most aggressive. These extremely ferocious and territorial creatures often hang from treetops, waiting to launch surprise attacks on their prey below. While these gulpers run on all fours, they can take a bipedal stance while attacking, slashing away at the prey with their sharp claws. In the Fallout series, the gulpers are portrayed slightly differently. First, they are the products of genetic tampering in Vault 4 laboratories, as was confirmed by the Vault 4 overseer who identified the creature as his uncle. Second, the show version of the gulper has a much more menacing appearance than the ones in the games. It's got a massive head, with spiked tendrils sprouting out of its scalp. Its arms are rather muscular, almost like a well-built human's, which come with hands with webbed fingers. The gulper's deadliest feature is the mouth, which opens like a giant Venus flytrap and has rows of squiggly human fingers instead of teeth. Living up to its name, the gulper is capable of gulping down its prey whole. It attempted to swallow Lucy on one occasion, and on another, it tried to eat up the Brotherhood squire Thaddeus. However, because because they don't chew up their prey and devour them whole instead, the gulpers take a prolonged period to digest the feed. It's possible that the gulper that Lucy encountered is the same one from the video footage from 200 years ago. It may have escaped into the wild after attacking the Hawthorns and has been hiding in a water body for years. However, the gulpers seem to be common threats of the post-apocalyptic wasteland, as the ghoul knew perfectly well how to tackle a gulper, presumably having battled one or many many before. Vault Tech, the true villain of Fallout. While we know America was destroyed by nuclear bombs in 2077, the finale episode of season one revealed who actually dropped the bombs. The corporations became more powerful than the government, and as you can guess, the leader of this evil private sector team up was Vault Tech. They acquired every other tech company under one umbrella and offered them unopposed control over their vaults. And in exchange, they were not to support the peace treaty and and not to fund any research on an alternate source of energy. Moreover, the corporations could do whatever they wanted to keep the vault dwellers under control, prompting ideas such as intentionally overcrowding the vaults so that people would have to fight it out for survival. More bizarre ideas included vaults governed by robots, the creation of super mutant soldiers, pumping psychotropic drugs into vault air supplies, and separating parents and children to create an atmosphere of trauma. However, the corporations Corporations will only be able to implement these ideas when the world is hit by an actual nuclear war, and not mere talks of it. This is where Vault Tech stepped in and declared they would drop the bombs themselves. Yep, you heard that right, people. It's Vault Tech who nuked the world so that their capitalist dreams can come true. In preparation for war, Vault Tech kept three secret bunkers to themselves Vaults 31, 32, and 33. Vault 31 housed their most efficient employees in cryo sleep who would wake up years after the Holocaust and take control of a world that's been wiped clean. They were also able to mate with the inhabitants of Vault 32 and 33 to create genetically superior offspring, who would carry on the legacy of Vault Tech. The most distressing thing about Vault Tech is that they not only started the nuclear war, but also planned for world dominion in the future. And as part of their future planning, Vault Tech assigned several vaults for wacky scientific experiments, with Vault 4 being one of them. Through Vault 4, Vault Tech's goal was to create advanced humans through gene tampering, who will be immune to radiation and will take over the surface in the future. Having said that, inhuman experiments were not only carried out in Vault 4, but also at the Enclave. This ruthless paramilitary science division discards newborn puppies for being underweight and experiments with greenish-black humanoids, suggesting super mutants are in the making for Season 2. Marvelous Verdict By revealing that the majority of the Vault 4 dwellers are descendants of laboratory experimentations, the show dropped some implications about the series' future. If we're to read between the lines, there may be a super mutant in hiding somewhere in Vault 4, one that was created as a result of the experimentations and was perhaps turned benevolent by the sweet-natured people of present-day Vault 4. Also, introducing mutant humans that are not ghouls was a refreshing take on the mutant menagerie of the 
the Fallout franchise. In a wasteland infested by feral ghouls, irradiated bears, and overgrown cockroaches, we can surely deal with a one-eyed overseer or a two-nosed doctor. That's all the Fallout talk for now, folks, and we hope you enjoyed our video. Before you leave, please don't hesitate to share your Vault 4 theories in the comment section below. And stay tuned for more Wasteland theories and Fallout content. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one, and be safe. Thanks, everyone.